Alrighty y'all, so in today's video we are going to be talking about the things that are going around in the world and this is a matter of life and death and you might be like that's a little dramatic of a title or maybe a little bit clickbaity but it really is when you can't when you can't feed your family and you can't heat your home in the winter time and you can't drive anywhere that's kind of life and death um, type of situation right there. I think it is a big deal and I think we got to talk about this a little bit in today's video. We are going to be watching a Jordan Peterson video today. He's made a new one. This was posted two days ago and he went into more depth what's going on around the world. Maybe you've heard a couple things here and there and if you've been subscribed to this channel for any uh, length of time you've been learning probably a lot about what's been going on around the world and if you're not subscribed uh, please consider subscribing without any further ado we will jump into today's video also my name is Matt this is my mother and her name is Texas Mom. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Texas Mom. I'm sitting in for my husband tonight. So I'm just filling in for him. And I just think this is a great topic. It affects mm -hmm. everybody. Um, and it is a worldwide crisis that we are seeing unfold before our very eyes. So here we go. Let's just jump in and yeah. see what's happening. Because energy is equivalent to work and because it Work is equivalent to food and shelter. If you make energy expensive, what you do is you starve the poor. And you don't have to starve them very much before they become desperate and things fall apart. And then we fall into these positive feedback loops. And so when you hear these bloody globalist, globalist utopians talk about the necessity for higher energy costs, you remember that that co comes directly at the cost of the world's poor. Christia Freeland, the Deputy Prime Minister of Canada, two weeks ago had the unmitigated and I would say quasi-demonic gall to announce publicly that $8 a gallon gasoline in Canada was actually probably a good thing because Canadians should be reminded nonstop just how severe the climate crisis is every time they fill up their cars. And that's perfectly bloody fine unless you're living on the edge of your economic capability and the fact that you can't afford- We just heard, not that long ago, from Sleepy Pants himself, Brandon. Um, there was a reporter filming him and they were like, so, um, I thought you were doing something about the gas prices and they're like $7 a gallon. I think they were up north somewhere. And he responded, oh, it's always been $7 a gallon. And they're like, excuse me? There you right. go. That was coming from our, uh, you know what, right. Brandon. And a lot of this green energy stuff, I mean, we've seen it and it's just been shoved down our throats for so long, this green agenda. And we're seeing now how it's morphing and coming to a head and it's it's in order to control all of us, mm -hmm. right? So we were just looking at an article not that long back um, of New York State and how they have a green agenda up there. It's already in place. The bill is already passed that they are going to be um, outlawing uh, wood burning stoves to heat your home um, by, I can't remember, was it this year? It was going to be in effect this year. They wanted it to be Pretty in sure. effect this yeah. year. I don't know how they're doing on their agenda. Don't know. But I'm sure things, sometimes the can gets kicked down the road a little bit, a little yeah. bit longer and a little bit longer. But these types of bills have been voted in. They're already in place. And even if they're not effective as of this year, they're just on the back burner and waiting to come forward. So we need to be digging deep. We need to be finding out these different bills that have been passed. We need to be fighting them. We need to be standing up and making our voices known because um, once they do these types of things and they actually implement them, um, we're gonna be really in a hard place. And yes. we, we talked about a few videos back, I think you and TD talked about um, Quebec. Yes. And um, Quebec is um, now saying that you cannot use your wood burning stove if it's more than 10 years old or um, if it doesn't meet these certain green agenda requirements 
net zero, yes. If it doesn't meet these net zero requirements and you know, there's these magic numbers and so, um, so what do they want you to do instead of use your good wood burning stove that is cost effective and people have been using them for years to Forever. heat their homes. Um, it's the same as in other um, cold climates across America that people use wood to heat because one, it's available, it's cheap, it's a clean way to heat your house and it's just, it's what um, makes sense, right? It's common sense. People have been using wood to heat for centuries, right? I mean, all of history, right? Yeah. So, um, so what do they want them to do in Quebec instead? And I'm um, supposing New York State would be saying the same thing here, is that you have to um, switch out your uh, wood burning stove for gas for a gas stove. Well, who controls the gas and the fuel? Oh, mm -hmm. so now they have you dependent on them and then they can control and manipulate all of the pricing of all these things. And they can tell you how um, warm they want your house to be and how cool they want your house to be. And they can control it all. They're already doing that in the Netherlands. They already got laws passed on, you can't heat your house up to whatever Celsius and all types of crazy stuff like that. Right, and if you have businesses, yeah. those businesses um, can only heat their businesses up to a certain temperature um, at certain hours of the day, and it's a control game. <sighs> this whole thing is a control game, and it just, let's get back to the video. <laughs> and the fact that you can't afford to fill up your car anymore puts you into unemployment and food deprivation in relationship to your children, and that's in the rich West. And now in Europe, we're some stupid on our energy policy because of these idiot environmental schemes that we've made ourselves pathologically reliant on the Russians. And we're gonna bloody well see what that costs us. And I know the Germans are burning coal again because their, their switch, massively expensive and counterproductive switch to so-called renewals has been another catastrophe. And so now only knows how expensive energy is going to be, become. The Dutch government put pressure on the farmers recently because a, legisla a legislative body that was EU controlled, that's my understanding, decided in favor of an idiot environmental group that, that, that and the court compelled the government, so that's a non-legislative body by the way, the court compelled the government to act in relation to the farmers. And apparently the farmers have had enough of this. The bureaucrats in Brussels, they are ruling by decree, right? And of yeah, course it yeah. has nothing to do with nitrogen. Here they're talking about nitrogen. It has nothing to do with nitrogen. It has nothing to do with ammonia. It has to do with m numerous things. One is taking the land, just as uh, happened with Stalin in Ukraine, you know, with the, uh, labeling the farmers kulaks in Ukraine, you know, the Ukrainian farmers, and, and uh, attacking and killing them. Here in Netherlands, there is an information campaign to make the farmers look like bad guys here as well. I mean, these are the new yep. kulaks, right? So yeah, so this just rolls right into your food, right? So what are they attacking in the name of saving the planet, in the name of this green agenda? And we all need to be speaking to it. We all need to be waking up to it yes. because it's been used to manipulate people into thinking that they're doing a good thing and that they're, you know, flashing their little like social uh, gang signs, gang signs <laughs> saying like, oh, I'm green, I'm going green, I'm doing all so these dumb. things. And what they've rolled this whole thing into is a giant snowball that's about to crush all of humanity. Yep. And, and we need to speak up, we need to use our it's voice. Life and death. So we see the World Economic Forum and how they're undermining all of our local food supply, our nationality food supply. They don't want things produced in those countries anymore. They want everything shipped yep. and imported and deported. And, and why? Because it is a control game, right? And we've seen that. Yep. And we, we've witnessed that firsthand years ago. I know we've spoken to this um, example in a, another video before, but so we were on the island of St. Thomas. This is many years ago, and we were traveling around. We were having a tour of the countryside, and the guy that was giving us the tour said, 
um, you see this beautiful island because we were saying how beautiful and lush and and we said wow you you all must grow so much food here he said we grow absolutely nothing here mm. we grow nothing and we said why why don't you grow anything he said every single thing that we have um, for food and for fuel and everything else is all important to the island. And we said, you know, why is that? This is such a beautiful place. You mm. would think it's so fertile. You could almost be self-sustaining here, you know? He said, it, you know, it was these outside pressures of mm -hmm. these worldwide organizations that had, and he blamed the U.S. Um, and Pumping he said the that cheap food. it had manipulated it. He said, do you see all these? This used to be dairies. He took us mm. by places that, he said, this used to be dairies. He said there was so much milk, um, but they undermined the economy. They imported all of this cheap milk, so nobody would buy the milk from their own island anymore. They would all buy this imported food and imported milk. And they said, he remembers that they, they literally, all the dairies shut down. They were flushing the milk um, just out, just onto the ground, um, and all the dairies are closed up. They had chickens running wild on that island. There was just chickens everywhere chickens by the courthouse, chickens in the cemeteries, everywhere. And um, he said, yeah, nobody grows anything anymore. Mm. Um, it's just, it's all imported. It's a, it's a totally different mindset. And what um, does that mean? That means that that whole entire island of St. Thomas is totally under control because at dependent. any, is totally dependent on the outside resources. And at any time they can have their whole entire food system totally manipulated mm -hmm. by just somebody up the food chain being like, you know what, we need some extra money right now, so just go ahead and jack the price. Mm -hmm. Or instead of doing 10 shipments this month, just do like one or two and you can, mm -hmm. you can like increase the price by 50%. And they can't really complain because there's no, they don't grow their own food. Absolutely. So. And it was, um, St. Thomas is a U.S. territory. So he said, like, you could run for government right now here and you would be voted in. It would be no problem. Hmm. Um, and he said, see all these roads and the pavement and everything. He's like, your government is actually paying for subsidies for all of this stuff to be done. So all of the improvements in town and all the things, we were subsidizing all this stuff. We had our hands mm. in all of it. We were controlling, manipulating <sighs> all of it. And it was just... Um, it was just a real eye-opener. I mean, back then we were very patriotic, me and my husband, and we were just like, wow. I mean, very ashamed that our country would undermine such a beautiful place mm. that could be so um, fertile and prosperous and self-sufficient for their people. And um, yeah, it just wasn't, so. Now That's we're nuts. now we're experiencing it here, mm. which is just a shame. It's just shameful. And these are the new yep. kulaks, right? When meanwhile, let me tell you something about farmers. I have spent more than half of my life overseas, more than 80 countries, a lot of war. I'm always going out with farmers, right? Farmers are so much, they're like truckers in that regard. They're so much in you can contact get along with, with the they have Yeah, they're like sense. con yeah, yeah, electricians and contractors and carpenters. That's why Christ was a carpenter, by the way, because if you're not honest, you can't build a house that stands up, man. And he wasn't a PhD sociologist, he was a carpenter. And those people who have to have their hands in the dirt and their feet on the ground, they have a sense about how the world works that's practical and embodied that the, the pinheaded academic globalists lack entirely and are also often incredibly jealous of. And so in Canada, it was the farmers and the truckers who rose up, you know, the misogynists and the bigots and the racists in our prime minister's terms. And then that's triggered these, these co-occurring protests in, in the U.S. and in Poland. And now, it isn't easy to get farmers upset either, eh? Because those tractors that they bring to the protests, those things are bloody expensive, and most of the farmers don't own them. They're, they have to finance them, and so they're running on very thin margins, three to 5% a year generally, and you have to be one canny person to run a big farm in a modern economy. You have to be paying attention to all sorts of unbelievably complicated and sophisticated things. And so when the farmers have been pushed to the point where they're willing to take time away from their farms to spray manure on the government steps, it's probably time to listen. The World Economic 
Absolutely. Yeah, and we've witnessed this, right? We we witnessed the trucker um, protest yeah. up in Canada that went on and on and on. And you know, all, everyone is um, cheering for them and rooting for them. I mean, they are the lifeblood. They are they are the the literal lifeblood of our country, of our system. Yeah. It's how we get products in yeah. and out. And Without them, we're gonna starve. Yeah, and if you're messing with the truckers and you're messing with yeah. the farmers, I mean, this is a, a war on, on our ability to sustain ourselves as countries, as independent countries, and why is the World Economic Forum trying to destroy all of these countries and make them all controlled and all interdependent? Oh, I know, to save the planet, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, but Code a lot language. of people are gonna die in the name of saving the planet, I'm yep. afraid. Yep, and they love that. Yeah. They love that fact that a lot of people are gonna die. Right, well, that goes hand in hand with some of their other goals. Yeah. The World Economic Forum is trying to control food supply, right? That is production and distribution, right? And so, uh, and one of the ways to do this is, as Stalin did with, and Mao did in China, and Stalin did in Ukraine and, and Russia, is to take the farms away from the traditional farmers and then put your, new, your farmers on that land. That started in Canada, jumped over to the United States. It's over here now. I mean, it's really growing. This courage is, is spreading. And so, uh, and, and you see Italian farmers, Spanish farmers, people are rising up. And the more they realize what's actually happening, because, you know, the man behind the curtain is the, is the WEF, the World Economic Forum. Of course, we're gonna have to deal with China, but at this rate, if Germany falls from these energy issues, which is looking pretty likely at this point, China is gonna peel off the rock too, right? As are we, economically, right? Yes, and the energy issues are real issues, yeah, right? Yeah, it's legit stuff. Yes. Yeah, so with all the craziness going on, especially last month's electric bill was mm -hmm. incredible. I just wanted to say this real quick. So our dryer actually went out. If you don't know, a dryer consumes a lot of electricity. So we were hanging everything up outside. So technically we're, we were actually using less electricity than the month before. Mm -hmm. The month before the electric bill was around 300 bucks. And then we get last month's electric bill in and it's like over $400. And we're like, we didn't run anything special during the month. We actually ran, we, were, we actually used less electricity. Absolutely. And they just cranked up the price. Absolutely. Extra $100 that month. Right. So this is what I was telling mom was that we need to figure something out mm -hmm. um, so then we are not um, dependent on our local grid because it's scary what they can do. So what we've been thinking about is Definitely getting into solar as much as much as possible. Just figuring out different ways of being able to be more off-grid and more self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. I thought about doing wind turbines, but then I kind of found out that they were kind of a hoax, which shocker. Um, anyway, so we're still trying. We're still trying to figure stuff out like that. But one of the other very, very, very easy things to do. Um, at least it was easy to do. Um, was install a fireplace or install a, a wood burning stove into your house. That will save you lots of money during the winter time. Um, the trickier part is in the summertime trying to keep stuff cool, but at least you can keep the windows open. You might be able to run a fan or something like that off some solar panels, keep you cool. You don't have to run your big old AC unit in it. So there's definitely ways to cool down. That's kind of a little bit more easier, but trying to stay warm, that's another issue. So definitely installing a wood burning stove would be a very, I would think is a very smart idea or Possibly, but the thing is is that you just can't grow propane. So I was gonna say you could do a propane burning stove yes. and maybe buy your propane in bulk and you could mm -hmm. get it like a couple hundred or a thousand uh, gallon tank and then you could have maybe like, I don't know, maybe if you, I don't know how many gallons you would need to like have like a 
six months supply of propane, but you know, that's just kind of the beautiful thing about wood is that you can just go out pretty much anywhere. Everybody pretty much has it, at least around here anyway, and you could chop down your tree um, and get some wood if it came to that. Um, what we do is we season our wood for a couple years before burning it, um, so then we don't get soot and stuff like that. But anyway, Excellent. those are some of the things that we've been working on around our homestead, trying to get off the grid. The other thing is too is, I'm saying, I'm thinking more like first, get off it, as much as possible, try to get off the grid. Second thing is, is the water situation. I think as soon as they get um, us totally controlled with our whole electrical grid, which they already kind of do, mm -hmm. but as soon as they really start to manipulate with that, of course they will try to go for total control, which they always do. Um, so I think they will eventually move on to the water situation. Mm -hmm. And we are on um, county water. We do have a shallow well, but we have been definitely thinking about putting in a deep well. And we really want to have a deep well mm -hmm. because they really, they just can't control that right. for now. <laughs> Absolutely. And we can only control the things that we can control. But yes. um, like Very Matt true. was saying, with the electric bill last month, that was a big eye opener. Yeah. Just the way that um, it can swing so high and it's it, so sh fast. it shouldn't have been. And then we were reminded of just um, two years ago, two winters ago, when we had a really cold winter. Mm. And um, a lot of people in Texas um, were um, really hurting. And the electric companies, there was an electrical crisis. And yeah. um, a lot of companies really yeah. gouged people. Yeah, with it was a total man-made crisis, too, yes. because they shut down our coal plants. A lot of several of our main coal plants here in Texas and then it really hurt us. And then eventually, during the end of the whole winter storm thing, they were like, okay, I guess we can turn them back on. And okay. shocker, we got all this amazing power again. Mm -hmm. And then we reached out, Texas reached out to these other states and we're, before the winter storm came was we like- We had given some power to some other states. Well, yeah, we were shipping power everywhere. Right. And then we were like, hey guys, we're gonna really need some power. And they're like, nope. We can't do that. Right. So, yeah. Right. There was lots of strings There was a lot of goofy on. stuff. It so. was a complicated yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. um, but we learned real fast as a state just how dependent we are. Sadly. Um, and, I mean, for better or for worse. Even um, though Texas makes all their own electricity. It's but, shameful. Shameful. Oh, it's terrible. Shameful. It's terrible. Our, our states should absolutely be more Independent, independent and less yeah. dependent. We should be working for towards sustainability in all areas. Um, but for us, what we can control in our life is just to be in remembrance of those things and yes. to um, not be so forgetful uh, minded. And we are, we're forgetful people, right? Yeah. We, we get into the normality mm -hmm. mode and we just are like, okay, yeah, 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 that happened, but it was a couple years ago. So whatever. So you yeah. just forget. And I remember yeah. when we went through that, I said to my husband, we need to make a list of all of these things that are on the top mm. of our minds right now, because we're, we're going we're we're gonna gonna to forget, forget. <laughs> yeah. we're going to forget the power comes back on and you get comfortable again groove. and you forget all yeah. of those things. Um, so yes, I am with Matt. I think it is a top priority to, if at all possible, um, move towards getting off the grid. We yeah. really, really make it a goal. We've looked at several different options Lots for solar. Um, it's a huge investment, but yes. we just have to figure out a way to do that without going into debt. Um, and for you all out there who are watching, you know, this is gonna be different. How we implement these things in our life might not be a realistic thing for you where you're yeah. at. So um, just sitting down, writing down some goals. If these things are even important to you, maybe they're not. Yeah. But if they're important to you and if you're awake and paying attention to see these signs, um, sit down and write down some mm. goals and, yeah. um, and, and make the decisions. What are you willing to leave behind? What are you 
Yeah. What sacrifices are you willing to make? Yeah, maybe because you might be saying, oh, well, you know, right now or this winter, I'm not going to be able to bring in enough money to go out and buy a hoity-toity fancy solar system or whatever. Right. Um, what I would personally do is start writing down a list like mom was saying, being like, okay, I'm going to start hanging. I'm going to unplug the dryer and I'm gonna start hanging stuff outside to dry. Mm -hmm. um, get a clothesline situation. Mm -hmm. um, just every little thing that if you can be like, okay, well, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try my hardest to, if I'm in one room, I'll keep those lights on, but I'm not gonna have all the lights on in the house, you know? Mm -hmm. So certain little things like that, definitely managing your electricity, being very wise with what you have turned on all the time and little stuff like that. So even if you are reliant on the grid, you, Lord willing, your power price, at least you can keep your um, electricity prices a little bit lower, and then you can actually save up eventually for that solar system or whatever type of alternative um, to the grid. We, I know a couple people that actually are still on the grid, still hooked up, but then they have a, they have a solar uh, system and they kind of switch back and forth. So they have this whole little deal that they do and it really cuts down on their electric bill at the end of the month. And I think that's pretty sweet. Super cool. Right, if the energy doesn't get turned back on and and, and, and yep. through the Nord Stream, things are going to get emotional, right? Uh, all across Europe, including here. Now, m most of the Dutch that I talk with, I was talking with a, a member of parliament the other day, he was completely oblivious to the famines, right? And most of the Dutch people I speak with uh, actually don't seem to see that, uh, which is of, but there's, these stores are, are nicely stocked and yeah, this is yeah. Netherlands. It's a place of yeah. honey. It's milk and honey here, you know. Yeah, and so it's yeah. kind of, as you know. Yeah, I was talking to a friend in the Netherlands, and I don't know, y'all. It's pretty crazy. I think there are a lot. At least I hope so. And at least y'all watching, if you are watching this, I would assume anyway that you are you have an opened er mind. And I definitely know a lot of our viewers and a lot of our subscribers are definitely have an open mind and they're definitely preparing yeah. for these things. But the sad thing is over in the Netherlands, I don't know why, um, I was talking to a friend and he's like, dude, everybody over here, they're like in this weird fantasy world where they think nothing is wrong, mm -hmm. everything's perfectly fine in the world. And he, they think he's absolutely crazy thinking all these things and thinking there's going to be food shortages and electricity mm -hmm. shortages and all types of stuff like that. And he's like, they just don't see it. They just don't see the, the, the trap that they're falling into of the government just taking over and having total control of their lives. Um, so it's pretty crazy. Yeah, and that is a thing, right? Um, I don't know if you've heard of normalcy bias before, but it's a thing that happens when traumatic cir circumstances are happening all around you. Um, just some hmm. type of um, crisis type yeah. event is going on. Um, some people will just revert back to a normalcy bias and they will just, you know what? I'm just gonna decorate my house and I'm just gonna wash dishes and do my laundry and I'm just gonna, everything's fine, everything's fine. And it's a, um, it's a coping mechanism um, to deal with the crisis that is going on out in the world. They can't handle it, something horribly, it's almost like um, when somebody dies and then people go through all those stages mm. um, and they go through denial. It's, yeah. it's very much like a stage of denial where they're just like, no, 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 yeah. everything's fine. I just need to do yeah. this. I just need to make my bed and clean my bedroom right now. And it's, it's all gonna be okay, you know? So that could be a thing. And I know somebody's gonna comment like immediately or start to think this. They're gonna be like, so what do you mean? We should live in fear perpetually? Yeah, no, absolutely. we're not saying that. Yeah. We're just saying you shouldn't be like, la, 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 nothing's happening. The world's right. perfectly fine. Wef's not trying to take over and right. trying to control everything. Right. Billy's not out there buying all the farmland up and they're just absolutely doing literally whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And we need to start, um, we need to start talking about these things and we have to start doing these things because if not, 
um, we're going to see all of our freedoms absolutely vanish and we're already seeing a lots and lots and lots of our freedoms vanishing away, especially on social media now nowadays. That's one of the main reasons why we talk about this stuff on this channel. Because if we didn't, there's loads of channels that don't. And they're just super Pollyanna and nothing bad is going on around the world. And that's absolutely just living in delusion. We're not putting this video out to scare you. We're not doing that at all. We're bringing this up. And so then you can start preparing because the writing's been on the wall for, long, for a long time. And now it's really on the wall and now they're just straight up telling it straight to your face what they're doing and for people that have common sense which we have a shirt make common sense common again people that have common sense you can see it and be like wow this is really easy to prepare for and this is really easy to course correct if we can have everybody on the same page and that's why they want to that's why they want left and right so then they can separate us and that's why they want racism and all that type of stuff because they want to divide us because when they divide people up into little like groups mm -hmm. we're really really weak but if we were all together on the same page mm -hmm. we're real we're unstoppable we the people are unstoppable and you got six big guys that have that are like no you can't do that that's climate change and whatever well if you got a couple million people that are like okay dude or guys in, sitting up there on your tall mountain, uh, no, we're not gonna follow you. Well, you know, they will fall. So that's why we all have to start, we all have to open up our eyes, open up our ears and start listening and start telling, start talking about this stuff to friends and start sharing it to friends and family and we're not doing it to scare them. We have to be awake. I mean, yeah. it is a, we're, we're experiencing- Awake, but not woke. Right, we're experiencing <laughs> a war yeah. on humanity, a, Absolutely. War, a culture war. Mm. Like, there's so many wars going on, a so, war on our food right yeah. now, um, a war on our energy right mm. now. So there's just so many different things happening. and. Um, and this propaganda is so strong. This has been, yeah. this, if you, if you tell a lie loud enough and long enough, right? Yes. All the people will believe it. So yep. this lie of, mm. of the planet and climate change and all this stuff has been said so loud and so long Keep on doing that it. people Keep on doing it. just, yep. just believe yep. it, um, to some degree or some level. Yeah. And, and your children are being taught it in the schools and the colleges, and we need to have a voice, have mm -hmm. a strong voice, and yep. say, that is nonsense. Yeah, propaganda. No, that's not. That's not right. That's not common sense. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is their end game. This is where we're going with that, by the way. We're not just- Dumpster fire. You know, we're not just recycling cardboard boxes, which, <laughs> you know, or, or whatever, plastic milk yeah. jugs. Okay, we can all agree, some of these things are good things, yeah, right? Exactly. But then when you take it over here, that's that's the end game mm -hmm. is that they control how warm Everything. or cool your house is yep. and what food or or not food you have in your refrigerator every month. Alrighty, y'all. So if y'all want to go ahead and watch the full video, we'll leave that down in the description down below. But we just wanted to kind of watch this video a little bit and then kind of just interject our thoughts and opinions on stuff and it is just our opinion. All of the things that we've been talking about is our opinion. So you don't have to get offended over it mm -hmm. um, because it's our opinion. So, and we're all, for now, uh, we have the freedom to our own opinions. So Absolutely. anyway, <laughs> thank you all so much for watching today's video, taking some time out of your day. Please remember to subscribe and share these videos with as many people as you know. And also we would love for y'all, the hardcore people out there, if you have any cool like reaction videos or just like, like dude, the, the Texas boys need to see this video, mm -hmm. email us at countrytexasboys.com. Um, I think you can find our email in the description and on our about page on the YouTube channel. Also, all the honey is restocked. The pecan honey is restocked. We got pumpkin spice mm -hmm. honey, which is incredible in coffee. So if you want a way to support the channel mm -hmm. and get a little something back for yourself, go on over to our farm shop, go check out all the things, all the t-shirts, yeah. um, all the honeys, all the teas and the coffees. It's just a fun way for us to give something to you and for you to 
um, support the channel in some way. So that helps us tremendously. Yes. Um, and just thank you all so much for watching. Yeah. And we just love sharing why we do what we do, why we live how we live. And we just want to encourage you where you're at to it's coming to the end of the year, write down some things, make some goals, um, say what you're willing to sacrifice. Yeah. How important is it for you to mm. be ready for yeah. these things that are coming ahead? Also, I will leave the link down in the description down below. You have your own channel now, and it does not have any videos on it yet. Mom's getting her camera tomorrow, which will be the day you're watching this. So video will be coming out soon on her channel. She's going to be posting about once or twice a week mm -hmm. over there. And it's gonna be all mom related stuff yes. and probably some prepping and all types mm -hmm. of stuff like that. Um, so there you go. So if you wanna to subscribe to her channel, if there's no videos yet, that will be in the description down below. So she would appreciate it and our yes. whole family would appreciate it if you would go over there and subscribe. But anyway, Thank y'all once again for watching today's video. We will see y'all later. Bye-bye.